Hey everybody, you are listening to Renewal Cast, a weekly podcast that features interviews, discussions, and teaching on various biblical and theological subjects. We do this because we believe that our minds are to be shaped and renewed by the life-giving and transforming Word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. So we pray for the next few minutes as you listen that you will see Jesus more clearly. Today on Renewal Cast, we're continuing on in our discussion of the Pilgrim's Progress. And today, uh, if you remember, Christian has just gone through the narrow gate, the wicked gate, and Goodwill sends him on to be instructed at the house of the interpreter. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I hope that you enjoy our discussion. Welcome, everybody, to to Renewcast today. We are continuing on in our study of the Pilgrim's Progress, and today we find ourselves to in to interpreter's house. If you remember last time, we got up to the point where Goodwill led him in the wicked gate and he's in the gate and the interpreter tells him to, to go on in his journey. And when he gets there, he'll get to a, a house and in that house, interpreter will let him in and teach him some things that he needs to know. And so that's, that's where we're at. And a guy that by the name of George Cheever, uh, did a commentary on this and he he writes this about this section of the pilgrim's progress he said it would be difficult to find 12 consecutive pages in the english language that contain such volumes of meaning in such beautiful and instructive lessons with such heavenly imagery in so pure and sweet a style with so with so thrilling an appeal to best to the to the best affections of the heart than these pages just to kind of highlight uh, he goes to interpreter's house to from, for some much needed instruction, and in a very short time uh, in the book, he gets a lot of instruction. And and it and the way that it's portrayed is is very stirring. And it, it's I, I think the imagery is just kind of stick with you, and we'll get there. But so as we let's just get right into this. We got he goes into seven different rooms. Uh, interpreter leads him into seven different rooms and he sees some things in those rooms. And then uh, there's, there's kind of an explanation of, of what those things are. So let's just go into the, the first, the first room. Uh, what do we see there? He finds a, a very grave person whose eyes were looking towards heaven. He had the Bible in his hand. Expression of truth was on his lips, the world behind his back. He stood pleading with men and a crown of gold hung over his head. So that's our guy. That's our who's guy. That, who's that depict? What's a that godly, depict? I, I would say it's a godly pastor. It's okay, probably yeah. Yeah. probably John uh, Gifford, uh, okay. his pastor. It's probably kind of who he has in mind there. Yeah. As he's so doing. a godly minister of the gospel, a godly pastor. That's right. A, a pastor. He's got his Bible in his hand. He's. Uh, yeah, it's good. Good picture of a pastor. That's what uh, the interpreter, that's kind of the pastor's role, isn't it? The, the, to be an interpreter. Interpreter's house is kind of the church, right? Isn't the church kind of the role of the church to be the interpreter's house? You kind of see that a little bit. And then. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would agree. As well. Any thoughts, Jay? Keep rolling. Keep rolling. Yeah, that's, rolling. that's a, just a, a wonderful picture of a godly pastor. Good. Yeah. And I and it's one of those things. I mean, you could kind of go into each of these images and I mean you could really spend a, a podcast episode on, yeah. on each one of them. We're trying to to kind of move through this and just hit the the highlights. Uh-huh. Um, but so we get to the next room and we see this is the the guy sweeping the room, right? The room full of dust. Mm-hmm. Interesting thing that happens in this room, right? It's room is dusty. Somebody comes in, sweeps the room. The dust is stirred, and and it's so it's choking. Can't can't breathe hardly in the room, and and then uh, somebody else comes in and sprinkles some water and settles the dust. Mm-hmm. And this is a picture of. The law, right? The law, uh, when one comes to, to faith, the law is is stirred. Uh, it becomes choking. The law uh, itself does not uh, save. But then 
uh, the, the the sprinkling of the water is is the gospel. Um, am I right on that, Jay? Yeah, Romans seven. He has in mind there. I think uh, we're free from the tyranny of the law. And the law has no power to justify, but the gospel comes in and settles it and cleans it up. Yeah, and all the law can do in the heart is just expose sin, show sin, stir up sin. It can't. It can't give any power over it. It can't. It can't quench sin. It can't. It gives no power over sin. Yeah, Bunyan says. Does. Yeah, Bunyan says this is to show you that the law, instead of it effectively cleansing the heart from sin, it does in fact arouse, give greater strength to, and cause sin to flourish in the soul. Yeah. Uh, I like that. I like that picture. I, I think that's. I, I do think that's a a good image of the mm-hmm. the law and the and the gospel and how we shouldn't intermingle them and 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 make the law into the gospel. You know the the law when it's stirred up, the more it's stirred up, it it, it chokes you. It doesn't save you. I, I I think that's a a great picture of of that. We need the the gospel to come and and deal with with our sin because the the law uh, cannot do that so Corinthians 15 56 the power of sin is the law okay anything else you guys want to highlight there no i think that covers that now we got patience and passion to children yeah passion was not at all content and patient was very quiet and Passion represents the, the people of this age. They want it all now. Um, the people of the world, they want everything now. Where patience is the is the pictures the the people of the kingdom of heaven, the people that that are waiting and living for that for that day. Uh, they're, they're waiting patiently for that day. Yeah. So let's just kind of let's kind of back up again. For, for a minute now that we've kind of looked briefly at what three rooms what is the so he he comes we said that that he gets saved as he's brought into the the narrow gate the, the wicked gate and then he's sent off to to interpreter's house so he's being an instructed and he's learned and he's learning some some very interesting things right the the importance of of the word that the 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 preacher the, the difference between uh, law and gospel and, and now, you know, the, the temperament of, of passion and, you know, explain. So what is the, what do you think the, the purpose is of interpreter's house? You know, what exactly is he being instructed? You know, what's the point, I guess, what kind of guy is he going to be when he comes out of there? How is it supposed to help him? Well, it's grounding him in some elementary truths. He, he you know, Christians need a godly, a godly pastor. One who carries the book, who, whose truth is on their lips, who's the world behind their back, and they they plead with sinners. They they need that. They need that that pastor. They need to understand the, diff, the what the law's purpose is and what the gospel's purpose is. They need to understand the distinctions, and they need to understand the basic temperament, the the distinction between the people of this world and the people and the godly people. So these are basic Christian things for a new believer to grow upon, and so. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's I think that's good. Wow. Jay, any I agree. Yeah. So one of the things that I one of the things that I was kind of thinking about here is is that one would expect that maybe, I, I guess, that somebody comes to faith, and like we talked about this last time, I mean you, you almost expect Christian's burden to, to fall off there, but it, it doesn't. And then so but he doesn't, and in fact even after he loses his his burden, he, you know, really he's being instructed here because, and, and see if you agree with me, but it it, it prepares uh, him for for trouble in, in the Christian life, right? It's this, like you said, John, it's this 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 initial grounding, uh, discipleship training in the in the Christian faith because life isn't going to be easy. It's not going to get easier for him necessarily, and sometimes I think we misunderstand the the Christian faith. And I think one of the things John Bunyan does is makes it very clear that this whole 
progression, this whole journey is not one that's easy. In fact, we're going to see just here shortly of just some of the, the difficulty of, of the journey, you know, that, that some people don't, don't make it. So Jay, what, what is the, what is the next room? Jay? There's fire burning against the wall and somebody's continually throwing water on, but the fire still blazes higher and hotter. So this is a, I think this is a, a good illustration. Of, well, it, I think a good cult, you know, Colt's uh, segue takes us right into this, right? Because, you know, when we start the Christian life, we we're on fire. We have a passion for the Lord, but, but Satan's going to what? He's going to qu- try to quench it. The world's going to throw water on it. Try to try to t- take, take that fire, that passion out, but the Holy Spirit will keep it burning. Keep the fire, the flame going is the point. And I think you're, you're right, Colt, that, that this is this in this room, we see that there's going to be battle. There's going to be, it's not all the Christian life isn't all mountaintop experiences where we're, we're feeling this huge fire burning and on top of the mountain experience where we're full of passion and joy and peace and flaming for the Lord. Sometimes it gets quenched and, and, and but the, the spirit keeps it going and burning and there's the ebbs and the flows in the Christian life. Yeah. And I think that, you know, Bunyan here makes it very clear that the, the Christian life is going to be full of, of difficulty. But at the same time, he's offering some tremendous encouragement, right? You're, you're walking into this room and there's this fireplace and somebody's dumping water on it, but it continually gets hotter. You know, it continually burns brighter and hotter, Bunyan says, you know, and that's because somebody's on, on the back throwing, you know, oil in it. And, Mm -hmm. and that's the, you know, the spirit of God continually working in the, in the life of of the believer so that they will continue on and and forge forward and and won't be put out by the, by the world, the the flesh, the the devil, and, you know, coming after the. Yeah. Although it will be difficult, the the spirit will keep us, will see that we persevere through it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is encouraging. So there's. There's triumph there. there. That's four. That's what the fourth room. That was the fourth room. Yeah. What's the fifth? That's a castle. Man in armor comes out and starts fighting his enemies. Right. Again, a picture of battle. Right. Yeah. The yeah. Christian life is not a, a cruise ship. Image isn't a good one, but a battleship. And this, this, this imagery here shows us that it's a it's a battle. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, he has in mind uh, Ephesians 6, you know, the, the armor of God. See anything there, Jay? I'm ready to move on to the dark room. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, number six goes into a, a dark, gloomy room. Now, this is uh, this is one of those rooms that, you know, after you read the book, you just never forget. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let me just let me just read a little bit here. Yeah. Then Christian said, now let me go forward. But interpreter replied, no, you must stay until I have showed you a little more. After this, you can be on your way. So he took him by the hand again and led him to a very dark room where a man sat in an iron cage. Now this man seemed very sad to look upon. He sat with his eyes looking downward to the ground, his hands tightly folded together, and he sighed as if his heart would break. Then said Christian, what does this mean? So the interpreter told him to talk with the man. And then you have this conversation that takes place between Christian and this man. But it is interesting that, you know, Christian at this point felt he was ready to go. And the interpreter says, no, you you need to see a little more here. You need to see a little more. And, you know, of course, you know, this, this room is, um, talking about the the reprobate, uh, and then of course the the last room is is talking about judgment, and you know those are two warnings, I guess if you will, that that Christian needed to to stick around for, and he needed to to be a part of, and he needed to to hear these things, and it is and it is interesting that he needed to hear these things right from the the man himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened to him? Well, I will let him tell you. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I just read a little more. Um, so Christian says, what are, you, what are you doing here? I am 
the man. I am, I am what I once was not. Are you, are you reading? What, you, what are you reading from? What, <laughs> yeah, maybe I should read it from the. Yeah, because I, I, I'm, I'm having. Well, I, I just thought you were reading from the same. I thought we were doing this one, and so I'm. I'm gonna... <laughs> yeah, sorry, I was reading it from the one I was reading. It's okay. I'm just. What I'm what just... page? What page is it on? Thirty-five. Okay. It's okay. I just I was getting confused because I. <laughs> yeah. So here it. Yeah. Okay. I I certainly am not what I was. That's that's better, right? <laughs> what were you? I was once happy, a professing Christian, both in my way of thinking and in my and in the eyes of others. I felt that I was fit for the celestial city. I looked toward to entering that place with great joy. Christian, I see, but what are you now? Hopeless. I am now a man of despair, rejected, abandoned, shut up in this iron cage from where there is no escape. How did you get in that condition? I ceased to watch and be sober. I allowed myself to doubt the word of life and gave way to my passions. I sinned against the light of the world and the goodness of God. I yielded to Satan's arguments and took possession of my sin. He took possession of my soul. I have provoked God to anger and he has left me. I have grieved the spirit. He is gone. I have hardened my heart, and now I cannot repent. You know, <sighs> boy, God, it's one of those. It's one of those things. Like you said, John, you you read this one, and you just you kind of don't forget it. You kind of you, you kind of even put your you know how you kind of tendency to put yourself in pages of the of the story in different scenes, and you kind of almost that you ask yourself, boy. You know, here's this guy that thought he was on the way to the celestial city. He was eager to to enter in. Then he sinned. Um, yeah. you know, and he and he turned his back and and now there's there's no escape for him from the iron cage. He he cannot uh, repent. And as the the congregation goes over uh, on, you know, Christian's going to say, "Well, why don't you just repent?" <laughs> and he, he says, "I, I can't. I, I've I've sinned." He's yeah, well, you, I, the I think the 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 key to understanding this is understanding that he's getting this from Hebrews 6, Hebrews chapter 6. And that's a passage of scripture warning against having once been enlightened, tasted the heavenly gift, sharing in the Holy Spirit, tasting the word of God, then falling away, okay, committing apostasy, which is what happened to this guy. He 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 had tasted the things of God and then went into sin and had committed apostasy. And then he couldn't repent anymore, and that's what it says in Hebrews six. They could no longer; they will not be able to repent. He will not uh, bring them to repentance again. So, how do we understand that? Well, I just say that in Hebrews six, and I would say this guy too. This is not a believer who lost his salvation. This is somebody who came into the church, who came extremely close to salvation under the influence of the gospel, under the influence of the ministry of the Spirit, who who had all the blessings of, of the gospel ministry and yet turned from that and in, went into sin with eyes wide open and then found that God would never bring them to that place again of being able to repent again and, and, and get to that place where they, could, where they could see the wonderful gospel again like they did before. And uh, that's what you see in Hebrews 6. In Hebrews 6, we see that because he says in verse 9, Though we speak in this way, yet in your case, beloved, we feel sure of better things, things that belong to salvation. So the, the implication there in Hebrews 6 is that is that those people weren't saved that couldn't repent. And so instead of seeing this person as someone who's saved and lost their salvation, I think it's best to see this person as who came really close and then went into apostasy, and then God would never bring them to that place again where they could repent. But this is a, a scary reminder, just like Hebrews is meant to be to us. To, to persevere in the Christian life to, as Hebrews, uh, excuse me, 2 Corinthians 7, 1 says, in the fear of the Lord, we, we pursue holiness, right? Pursue holiness in the fear of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would I, say I, that there's, I it. It, yeah, I think you're right. And I, I don't think, uh, I don't think Bunyan would say that these people are lost their salvation and then, and then uh, were once saved and then lost their salvation. But uh, like you said, I, I would agree wholeheartedly with you. There's there's a lot of uh, scriptures that, that that speak of of this idea uh, of not so much 
you know, the parable of the soils. We, we talked about this, you yep. know, that these guys eagerly uh, follow. And then when, when things come up, they, they come away uh, in church, in our church, we're preaching through John six and, you know, Jesus walks out on the water and goes in, and meets those disciples. And then the next day, this multitude gets up, they can't find Jesus. They, they figure out that he's uh, across the sea of Galilee with these other disciples. And they're like, how did you get here? And Jesus doesn't answer their question. He, he turns around and said, you're searching for me because you want to fill your bellies. You know, you want, you want more food. You're just thinking of the loaves and the fish. You know, you're not thinking of the, the fact that you, you missed the, you missed the sign. You know, the sign was pointing to, to me as, as the bread of life that, that could fully satisfy. You're missing that. You just want to satisfy your belly. And, and he goes on and he teaches in this, you know, this bread of life discourse. And, and throughout that text, the, 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 it, it gets hard and everybody leaves. And eventually Jesus turns to the disciples and says, what are you guys all going to leave too? You know, the, the multitude of people that there that followed him to, for great lengths, you know, around the Sea of Galilee, they, they, they wanted to, to be near him. He taught some things they didn't like. The multitudes left. And eventually Jesus just has the 12 there and turns to the 12 and says, what are you going to leave too? And of course, Peter says, no, where else would we go? You have the words of eternal life. But when, you know, when things get hard, people fall away. That doesn't mean those people were believers, but they did eagerly follow Jesus. They, they were eagerly following him for whatever uh, reason. And I think that's the, the same with this guy. You know, he was an eager follower. He let things come up. He followed the, the passions of his flesh. He pursued uh, those different things. And then there was a, a point in which it, it was too late for him. He he turned he turned he he left he he couldn't repent and it's 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 it is it is very scary you know those you know those people and I think John you're kind of alluding to this but the, those people that you know would call themselves Christians you know this an idea of easy believism and you know they would they would pray the prayer they would come to Jesus they would you know and then they go on they live their life however they want they don't they they just think they're good with Jesus because of something they did in the past or or something like that they they toy around with sins and they just say you know hey god is god is a god of grace god uh, loves me the way i am god you know all these things and they just let those let those sins permeate uh, their life boy they're they're running the risk of being they might think they're free but they're actually this guy in the the iron cage you know I, I was going to ask you this question too, and I, I don't know how it fits in here, but I don't want to take the, the allegory too far, you know, but, you know, people in this place, this guy in the iron cage, do they know that they're in the iron cage, that they're incapable of repenting? You know, you know, you kind of see where I'm getting at here. Are they actually duped into thinking that they're still on the road to the celestial city, even though they're on the wide road that leads to destruction? Well, I, 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 I know somebody. I, I've, I've, I've had, I've, I've came across people that that were living the Christian life, were doing really good, and like this, they went into their lusts and turned away and went into sin, and they couldn't get, they couldn't get out, and. I think they I think they knew they were this. I, I do. I mean, it's a very very frightening thing to even consider. So I've I've seen I've seen that. So I've actually come across people like like this, and it's a very frightening thing to consider. I don't know in every case though. You know, it, it is a it is a call just to make sure that uh you know, I recently read Apostasy by John Owen, the book uh his book on apostasy is really good. You know, it's important to understand that that when you really are regenerate, the spirit will never leave you and you're you know, you're you're not when you're born again, you're you're never going to be unborn again, okay? The spirit will persevere with you to the end. But but if you've never really embraced Christ by faith, you know, with your, you know, truly with knowledge, assent, trust and commitment with the will truly truly trust and commitment to christ uh, with true repentance and faith if you come short of that and you just you're just coming un into the under the blessings of the church and you're hearing the word of god and you, you know like these like these people were you know the you know you're talking about in the gospel of john and you know they uh, they're getting some blessings from being around christianity but they never really come to christ 
they're in danger. They're in danger. You need to come to Christ. You need to you need to come to Christ and settle settle the issue because there's security in Christ. But but to come close, there's a danger. Do Christians never end up in an iron cage, hopeless? Well, that depends on your theology, I think. And and maybe we'll hear from you, and maybe you'll you'll straighten us out. But my theology would say that he's talking about Hebrews six, and those people who are in the iron cage in Hebrews six fell short of salvation. But you you have the floor, sir. Christian later on in the story is in an iron cage and he's hopeless, right? Oh, well, he gets out, right? Yeah. So we don't always know. Okay, what sure. state the person that iron cage is in? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. I... <laughs> yeah. But this guy. Yeah. Let me, let me just read. Uh, let me just and, read. And, and you're right. And, and you're, you know, that's a good point because, you know, those people out there maybe that are in our ministry, maybe they've fallen away. Maybe a guy is in our church, maybe under church discipline, maybe left his wife, whatever. And he's in apostasy for years. He could come back to the Lord. And and we don't ever give up on him, so that's a good point, Jay. That's a good point, right? The, I yeah, I think that's that's a good note there to that that Christians, true Christians, do leave for these things. They they do uh, get caught up in the lust of the flesh, the pleasures and profits of the world, and in those enjoyments for a time, but. To them, like like you you guys were pointing out, the the spirit never leaves them. The the spirit, you know, the going back to the fireplace, right? At, at some point, you know that that fire is going to get stoked uh, by by the spirit uh, using whatever means, and that person's going to come back. Let me just read uh, this last little bit of Hopeless's words, and then and kind of lead into the last thing that Christian needs to see. Hopeless. For the lust of the flesh, for the pleasures of this world, the profits of this world, in the enjoyments of which I did then promise myself much delight. But now every one of these bite me and sting like a serpent. Oh, if I could repent. But God has denied me repentance. I feel his word gives me no encouragement to believe. He has shut me up in the iron cage of my sin and disbelief and will never, never, never set me free, nor can all the men of the world free me from this prison. Oh, eternity, eternity, how shall I cope with the miseries that shall be mine forever? And then interpreter, let this man's words be remembered by you to be a constant caution. Christian, well, this is awful. God help me to watch and be sober and to pray that I may shun the evil and misery of those who go that way. Sir, it is not time for me. Sir, is it not time for me to go on my way? Interpreter, wait till I show you one more thing and then you may go. So there's one more thing that Christian needs to see and then he'll be uh, on his way. And this is an image of an old man uh, rising out of bed, shaking and trembling because he was, he was, left behind i think is the way it's worded isn't it yeah yeah um, so the the rapture didn't <laughs> not left behind not left behind like that left behind <laughs> okay no he's talking about he's talking about judgment right the, the day of judgment you know this guy was he was left behind in the fact that he was found lacking he was he he wasn't uh he wasn't found Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think w- one thing, let's, uh, I, I want to make sure we end on a note of hope. If we have a desire in our heart to, to get right with God and repent, I believe that, that it's not too late for anybody. That That's my, my, my belief. So sure. Certainly as Jay, Jay mentioned, believers can apostasy and fall into the cage for a time. And that can be hopeless even for a believer. And Many believers have felt like they were in the cage forever and committed the unpardonable sin, and and uh, we have may have been there ourselves. But uh, the point is, is that if we have desire to repent and turn to the Lord, that it, that in itself is a sign that we we haven't gone too far. That is how I view it. 
So we need to keep knocking, pressing into the Lord and, and crying out. And the place to fear is in my in my uh, in my understanding is when people no longer want to repent and turn to the Lord. That's the place to fear when they no longer want to be forgiven and repent. That's the, that's the place where there's coldness towards God. There's a no desire to, for Christ or to repent. That's the place where where there's should be great fear. Yeah, and I think that's that's the difficult part when you're talking when he's talking to this man in the iron cage. Is on one hand he's acting like he wants to repent, but he can't, you know. But there's there's this other side where he says, "I'm I'm locked in my unbelief." You know, I, I don't, you're, you're getting a picture a little bit behind the the curtain, you know, of what's going on. I mean, the guy, like you said, John, he doesn't, he doesn't want that. He doesn't, he doesn't want, you know, he's, he, he's an unbel, he's unbeliever. He's not believing. He's not, he's not turning his heart toward those things. And he's an unbeliever. I think he's, yeah. what you, is what you just yeah. you hit it on the head. The guy's an yeah. unbeliever. He's an unbeliever and he doesn't want to change. And, and this isn't the Bible. Either. No, it's not. And, and Bunyan's theology, I believe J- Bunyan thought there was a, a place from uh, where a believer could even fall into something like that. So I'm just saying that let's leave it with hope is what I would say. Let's leave yeah. it with some hope out there. You know, if if someone if, if you want to be forgiven, you want to repent. I, I really believe that that there's 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 tons of hope there with the Lord. And uh, and, and really Bunyan's point here in the interpreter's house is both a, a word of caution and a word of hope. You know, at the, at yeah. the end of this section, interpreter to Christian, now have you considered all these things? Christian, yes, they give me hope and fear. Interpreter, well, keep them always in mind that they may warn you against evil and goad you forward in the, may you, in the way you must go. And may the comforter always be with you to guide you in the way that leads, leads to the celestial city. You know, there's, there, there is great Hope, hope here. Yes, there's a word of warning, but especially in that scene with the, the fireplace, right? There's, yes, there's going to be, uh, and the, the scene with the, the armor, the armor, you know, the guy that comes out and, and fights the battles so that there, there is victory, uh, you know, for the believer in this, you know, it doesn't end for everybody in the, in the iron cage, but that does exist. You know, I think for Christian, there, there's great hope that, you know, that the Lord is, is with him. He's been with him this far. He's, he's pushing him forward. He's going, you know, and Christian realizes that, yeah, he needs to, like you said, John, press on, press in. Okay. All right. So uh, next time, how far are we going? Good question. We have some interviews coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, do, to, don't we? Yeah, remember to look at the blog too, but next yeah, time renewalcast.com you can check out there's a blog section with several blogs there from a lot of different people well let's uh let's try to make it uh up to uh arrives at house beautiful maybe okay or do you want to just cover loses yeah, burden so, the cross or do you want to just cover that loses his burden well let's try to get to page 47 47 in this book Okay. Yeah. And if yeah. we if we don't get past the cross, then well that'll be fine too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. All right. All Thanks right. everybody. Till next time. Thanks for listening. You can find more information about us and check out past episodes on the website at renewalcast.com or you can connect with us on social media like Facebook, Facebook.com slash renewalcast. We will see you again next week. Lord willing.